Um, that I thought was really, really interesting to check out has been this clip, courtesy of No Jumper, that features Adam22 talking about what he's learned ever since everybody essentially left and said he's a bad boss, they don't like how he acts and stuff. I found this clip really interesting because we're getting to the point where Adam22 is little by little getting to the stage where he's starting to understand why everybody left. He's starting to have the magic word, accountability. He's starting to take some personal responsibility for what led to the max exodus of all those hosts that left No Jumper that was so integral to the success of that platform. I still think it was avoidable. I think if Adam got out of his own way and stopped having an incredibly big ego and stopped being a narcissist and acting like he couldn't do any wrong and actually acted like a boss and a leader, he could have saved that situation. I don't think he could have got... It wasn't as bad. It wasn't bad enough that it could not be remedied. He could have fixed it. But because in that moment, he was stuck in his ways, he had his own preconceived notions, he was doubling down on how right he was and it eventually led to everybody kind of, you know, running away and the, the platform being what it is and him trying to basically build it up from scratch again uh, based on everybody kind of leaving and joining all those other guys with their other shows. But I thought this conversation he had recently on the recent episode of No Jumper Show, episode number two, 203, he actually spoke pretty well about his feelings about No Jumper, the future, and about how he maybe will address things going forward. And I felt like we're finally getting to a stage where Adam from No Jumper is starting to accept some personal accountability for how things kind of played out so this is adam 22 speaking about it now i'm gonna play the clip for you people walk away you're turning your back right so even in a sense of if you don't don't feel like oh they're shading you and turning your back and turned against you i guess as soon as i say like oh somebody turned their back on me that just makes me feel like i'm taking the victim role which i don't want to do i don't want to act like oh like right. Right. poor me because i'm able to like zoom out of this shit and really like look at no jumper and look at the position i'm in and i'm gonna be real with you like when we look at hip-hop media all of the people who are successful who are at the top of their game right now in hip-hop media are pretty much in their early to mid 40s by the time you get into your 50s for the most part dudes are starting to kind of age out uh, i have nothing but respect for people like sway or big boy or whatever but at a certain point They've kind of like been in the game so long that you look at them as elder statesmen. Those are the OGs, whatever. But yeah. Charlemagne is like 45. Fucking uh, Wack 100 is 45, your, your man's. Uh, <laughs> Joe Budden is like, I think, 45. You know, it's like, uh, and, and then you look at somebody like Ak, who's like early 30s, and you're like, damn, he's like hella young to yeah. be in the position he's in. Yeah. I'm almost 40. So from my perspective, it's kind of like, how do I continue to make No Jumper relevant and, and have like a real audience for the next 10 years? Because at some point, I'm just going to age out of this shit, right? Yeah. So if anything, I feel like I kind of came out of this whole shit a lot more ready to just like devote time to really like caring about the culture and paying attention to shit and having listened to the Dirk album and the Gunna album over and over. It just kind of feels like I feel a little bit... I don't know, like like one thing that somebody very wise said to me the other day, they said, what happened to, to you is what I've seen happen to a shitload of successful people where you become successful doing one thing and then you want to keep going and you want to like start to master other things and like get into different games. And like for, for me, in a sense, I think trying to do more political content and trying to, you know, like a lot of people don't even probably know who watch this podcast. I don't think that's actually right. I don't think the issue was that he was trying to do too much while also running the company. I think most of the issue was his lack of interpersonal skills. If you listen to Terrell, if you listen to AD, if you listen to Duno, if you listen to Gina, if you listen to even the house phone, who's not the most reliable you know, um, witness really because he's got his own issues that he has to deal with. But really, if you get to the, the crux of the issue, a lot of the people, even someone like a Riley, um, Yuri's girlfriend, most of the issues and the issue and the problems that they have with No Jumper was the lack of interpersonal um, you know, um, skills from the lead 
leadership, in terms of telling them where they stand, in terms of being clear as to what they suspected from them, in terms of, I don't know, looking out for their feelings, all this stuff that is probably um, way more integral to running a company than people probably give it credence for. I know for myself, I haven't really run a company myself. I've done nothing of that sort. But I do know sometimes working in workplaces, if the work is hard, it's one thing. But if you're coming into work and you're secretly hating the people that you work with, it's nearly impossible to make it work long term. You can probably, you know, bite down on your gum shield and essentially um, pull up your big boy pants and kind of roll up your sleeves and work a really terrible job and make it happen if in, if needs be and bills need to be paid. But if you're somebody at your workplace that you really don't get on along with and every time you see them in the hallway, you're flipping tense up or your heart sinks or you just get really angry, it's very difficult to make that work long term and i think everybody in that building had some sort of issue with adam personally and maybe they didn't speak about it maybe they didn't vocalize it maybe that was their fault but i think as a leader he should have recognized that and tried to have some sort of powwow and a sit down with everybody to clear the air and to make sure everybody knew where they stood but what he did instead was throw out little subliminals he'd say little slick stuff on podcasts he'd probably say stuff slickly in group chats maybe on the chat call in um whatever it may be so he wasn't really addressing it like a leader so i think in the end when that happened the people that were there to get annoyed with when they saw an opening to leave they all left but they also knew that there was no saving it because they've known this guy for a long time and the one thing they can know for sure was that they weren't going to get any kind of change in his behavior anytime soon because Adam is kind of the way he is and he's not really going to change. But we're kind of seeing some acknowledgement of it. But I think him blaming it on him trying to change careers and move his perspective isn't really the right way to go about it. But I can see where he's coming from. But I spent way too much time studying poker and learning about poker and playing poker and shit like that. We got to go play poker. You play poker too? Don't play with play. me. Don't play with me, Brick Baby. Bro, we could do that every night. If that's what you want to do, that would be. You want to come to the World biggest... Series with me? You yes. missed it. It was one last week. I do. It yeah. Was, yeah. It was one last week, my boy. I think you. <laughs> Course said I do. Adam, yeah. <laughs> Court's got to watch out, man. He's next on the chopping block. Court has to watch out. Court, you need to step up. If you're watching this wherever you are, please step up because you are next to be cut. You're going to be getting the same free jokes conversation. You're going to get the little passive aggressive bitchiness thing that Adam was doing to AD and Terrell. Please. Please figure this out, my friend Court. You are next on the chopping block, sir. You are next. Oh, he bought in with like 2,000 or 1,000. I'm like, bro. Well, the World Series is 10,000. You want to play the main yeah, event that's with me, what I'm like, yeah. And it but takes no, they many, said many that, days. They said that it's like, it was like bonuses if you knock somebody out. like Progressive knockout dollars. tournaments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Shit like that. I, you know what I'm saying? I never heard about that. It changes everything. Yeah, I want to. I, that is my... In game, I, I want to be the World Series poker champ. Because That's, all right, I was talking to academics the other day, and he's like, "Oh, I just learned to play poker." I'm like, "Oh my god, another thing that me and you are going to be competing on or yeah. whatever." But like, but, as soon as I, I was telling him, I'm like, "Bro, be careful because that shit has consumed shit? My, my YouTube yes, timeline." Look, my YouTube timeline. Okay, so Roku TV or is that Samsung TV? They have a World Poker Series channel, right? Where they play that shit all day. And I mostly my girl play online. So mad because that's I be in there watch watching, that? <laughs> and she be like, "Why are you so hyped?" Also, I don't mind Brick Baby. I know he's a bit crazy and he has a you know divides opinion online, but I think in terms of no jumper, someone like a Brick Baby is a much better fit than the other dudes because he's a grateful you know he's grateful to be in that position. He's spoken quite openly about how down bad he was before he started no jumper, and also I get the feeling he's not somebody that wants to build a media empire. I think those other dudes they kind of saw their futures um, a little bit bigger than what no jumper was available. So maybe Adam has a point there in terms of those guys were always going to leave at one point because they saw the inner working zones of no jumper they saw how much money no jumper was making and they also were seeing how much money they were making from their own streams so it was only you know a matter of time before they all decided to kind of you know pour their resources and kind of do their own thing and in la they have this really they have a thing where they kind of don't like being under the thumb of the white man. This is still a thing there. I think maybe in other parts of America, maybe even the East Coast, they're not really that bothered by it. But I think the fact that Adam22 has one of the biggest hip hop platforms in on the West Coast, essentially maybe the biggest, and all these guys are working for him. I think some of those guys never really, it never really sat well with them that they were kind of working for the man in that respect. So maybe the writing was always on the wall. But I think Brick Baby is the perfect person for them at this point because he's a grateful employee. He's 
he's a good employee. He's going to play position. He's going to work hard. He's going to turn up and do what needs to be done and kind of keep it moving. He's not looking to build up his own platform. Like, like all my suspect, like even a flucker, they're not looking to build their own platform anytime soon. They don't want to get, they don't want to get their own Spotify deal. They just want to be working really hard at what they're doing and kind of get it as a weird. So I kind of see what they mean. Look at people I'm like, are you don't man. see what he got. It's a whole thing. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, don't fall. <laughs> yeah, I'm in there but, like, I, but the only reason ahead, I mentioned though. poker is just go to ahead. say that, like, I feel like I've become like refocused on what we're doing here, which is really like just trying to have the best possible conversations about hip hop and the surrounding culture possible. Right. And for a while, I feel like I kind of got distracted or I was just trying to take on too many challenges or whatever. And no, it's not that your interpersonal skills suck, my friend. You're not a very likable person. That's something I don't think Adam 22 has, has actually ever really acknowledged. When No Jumper started, I think for the most part, I can speak for a lot of people because I was a fan of the show for a long time. You tune into Don't Jumper because Adam got some of the best interviews with some of the up and coming, with some of the best up and coming rappers at that time. SoundCloud era, all that malarkey, you don't need to go over it again. You know what it is, right? But no one really liked him as a person. He'd ask maybe some good questions because he clearly did his research. He'd actually go as far as listening to albums. So it was a refreshing listen to hear him interviewing people because he wasn't like Charlemagne or Ebro where you just turn up and he, they just ask you questions randomly they don't actually do any research on you they don't listen to your stuff they just basically ask you whatever meta question they want to ask so maybe that was a win but over time when people got to see his personality he wasn't the most likable guy in the world people maybe like Cam Girl, maybe Robesman maybe Housephone more but it was never even Hakeem Adam was never the most likable person he maybe was someone that you maybe admired you saw as a good um, you know as a good uh, motivational thing because he built the shop and he did his platform blah 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 but as a person he was never that likable personally never ever ever that likable um the same thing goes for and i think it probably even got worse i think for me i started to turn off from him a lot when he started to get into his porn man lane it was never really an interest to me it kind of always seemed a bit strange i know it's obviously a thing we all watch it and everyone's got interest into it but when he decided to kind of be the porn man content king and he tried to kind of you know seek that content into no jumper it kind of got a little bit too much for me and i kind of got a bit put off by it because i'm one of the maybe there's guys out there that like it but i'm one of the rare dudes out there who doesn't give a single fuck what a porn star has to say outside of the scene i'm watching i don't care about their opinions on culture i don't care about knowing about their family i don't care about what their feelings i don't care about anything i don't even want to know their real fucking name so the fact that this guy was giving them platforms and interviewing them and stuff and you know talking about meeting them and what it was like to fuck them and stuff was like fucking hell brother enough you know what i mean it's like you're I'm not sure i'm not sure if you guys have ever had this happen to you but have you sometimes had um friends because this is strange i've had it before and it's really weird have you had friends before who speak to you in graphic detail about what they get up to with their boyfriend girlfriend husband or wife and it's always cringe. Like, they'll come back. I don't know. You're sitting down watching TV. They'll come back in the room like, fuck, you know, man. She blew my fucking back out. You know what I mean? Like, oh, Jesus Christ. My legs are hurting, man. I was smashing all day. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it's like, your, it's like their girlfriend or boyfriend. Not some random hookup in, in whatever when you were going out. Fair enough. It's somebody that you see all the time because when you go to their house, you, you say hi to the wife or the boyfriend or the husband. Like, you see them. So it's like, bruv like keep that stuff to yourself that's what sometimes it feels like when adam 22 is talking about fucking smashing porn stars all the time it's like bro just keep that content for plug talk if we want to if we want to hear it we'll go there but when i'm listening to no jumper i want to hear about the latest scandal with drake i want to hear about this new kedrick album dropping that's what i want to hear about i don't want to hear you fucking into what you know interweaving some of your own personal sexual escapades i don't really care too tough it's really really strange personally but again maybe i'm in the minority there and like i don't know after all this time i just feel i just feel happy and i feel like i'm able to sort of zoom out look at what i got and be happy about it and i realize that the people who left that's not going to define the brand when we look at it five ten years from now you know it's like because i already feel like we brought in a bunch of super talent no he's right it's not going to define the brand but it did define him as a business person and him as a leader i think a lot of people kind of looked at him sideways when that shit happened because they viewed all those guys as closer friends as they actually were i still think they were friends i just think they didn't deal with the situation well i think that can happen sometimes with friends friends can maybe let you down that does happen it doesn't mean you were never friends i just think they had no way of 
conflict resolu- resol- resolving it. There's no conflict resolution. Maybe because too many things got said, too much disrespect was had, too many people were in their feelings. Yes, but the main crux of it was that people definitely left or came away from that impression of the show that Adam doesn't take those people, took his host for granted kind of thing and didn't res- accept any responsibility for the part he played in the issue he kind of blamed it all on lush he blamed it all on ad he didn't understand why tiro didn't want to talk to him like he didn't understand that tiro had loyalty with those guys because he knew those guys before he knew adam like very strange way of kind of looking at things that kind of didn't really make any more sense really but you know at least he's getting there understanding it a little bit but i also think you know in general what the, the approach he's going for now where it's just okay less about promoting these guys as individuals and letting them have their own platforms and more so turning no jumper into just like a you know what barstool used to be in the beginning where you just went there to kind of view the content they had on there now it's kind of changed and everyone's kind of got their own shows and their own channels but i think just having a main kind of hub where you can kind of tune in and hear these guys speak about hip-hop culture stuff in the background is a great way to go about things as opposed to kind of cultivating and nurturing their talents as bigger media figures just have them as hosts have them as kind of talking heads and kind of keep it going from there that makes a lot more sense to people and that there's other people who are trying to come in and everything and i don't know i just feel good about shit and i'm thankful for the opportunity and i'm not letting the fact that we had a bunch of people leave like rule my fucking mind when it comes right. to what was yeah. this was this um yeah fair yeah. fair enough fair enough fair enough i completely understand where he's coming from and again like i said it's the baby steps adam was in a place at the beginning where he was taking no accountability no responsibility for the situation at hand and now at least he's doing a bit of it and accepting a small you know it's not the best but at least he's doing some of it so credit to him in that regard and hopefully um fingers crossed they get back to where they are i'm not tuning into no jumper i am subscribed i don't really care for the show anymore because you know i don't really care for the host that much because i guess i was in it mostly for the people that were commentating on the things and i've got them on other channels i can follow them fig muni um what's it called um, biggest bros uh back on fig blah 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 so i don't really need to tune into them but i'm still rooting for these guys in it because i love a good comeback story so if adam can um revive no jumper and get it back to you know maybe close to where it was before and have it popping without all the internal politics without all the egos without all the entitlement without all the greed without all the backstabbing bloody blah 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 that's a win so let's hope it gets there in the future what are you guys saying here in the chat this must be a uk stream i woke up to P, yes, big up to the hotel, UK in the house. I am here. Um, he's a great interviewer. I'll give him that. Yes, for sure. I agree. Um, he's not even that great of an interview, Adam. It's just because he does research. The bar for being a great interview in hip hop is all you have to do is research because most people, most media figures in hip hop don't even do research. They don't even, you know, listen to your album before they interview you. They don't check out maybe your most recent interviews and see what questions you answered all the time and avoid those, those fucking questions they don't even try to maybe figure out interesting questions to ask you that nobody's asked you they do the bare minimum really that's why a lot of artists don't really like doing interviews because it's either going to be messy shit or it's going to be fucking redacted shit that you've already spoken about a million times so adam just does the bare adam just does the bare minimum and it gets them further um and you know gave him credit for that but really and truly everyone needs to kind of improve in that respects um people are saying here he made a friend network of porn stars yes of course all right big up natashka just seen you there what's good so that um, we shouldn't know the inner details of your sexual exploits exactly if you know, you know what i take that back if if your channel is based on sexual exploits and I shouldn't go. I shouldn't go there and be surprised that you're speaking about that sort of stuff. I just mean if you have a platform talking about hip hop, I don't want to hear about you. You know, smashing some fucking delinquent in the car park. I don't give a fuck. Like, keep that sexual content for the sexual stuff, and keep hip hop stuff for hip hop stuff because some people get turned off by it. It's just something I want to hear. It's like when I watch porn or whatever, I watch it for what it is. I don't want to fucking hear a podcast about it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not my vibe at all in the slightest. Once it's off, I'm already fucking feeling shamed anyway. I'm, um, you know, great sense of shame, right? It's feeling me once it's fucking done. The last thing I want to do is hear somebody talking about it and pontificating about it and describing it in fucking excessive detail. No, stop. Okay, stop. <laughs>